if I show it to you within the scriptures, written and we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, where it says God will enter his creation and there will be a crucifixion and there will be all these things that happen that are related to Christ, you're saying I should reject these prophets because I don't believe it's possible, even though I can read for myself that these things were written before it occurred. Because you keep asking me, what is my belief that this is from God? I said, who something is written by is irrelevant. If I can read for myself. Yeah, which means to me that was still if unbelievable. I, if I can read that in the book of Isaiah yeah. 53, that it says there will be a crucifixion yeah. thousands of years before it happened, and I know Christ was crucified, then why should I believe, why shouldn't I believe in it? So I'm saying if, because we, your preposition of the belief in the Quran was that if it's from God, then it's true. Yeah. So if I'm saying the same thing likewise, that if it's from God, then it's true. So if God describes his nature, I'm not going to say, well, it doesn't make sense. How can God become a man? Because if I see God has, the prophets have prophesied this and it happens and the fulfillment is through Christ, I don't need to reason about it. I believe it because it came yeah. because of the, the, the two things you said that I, I found still unbelievable, and I, right. I say, is that you said firstly it doesn't matter who wrote these mm. books in the bible to me I'm, that, I'm that's still like wow second thing is it doesn't really matter like if we go and understand the trinity it don't really matter like you guys kill each other over that doctrine like like i was reading the other day that a whole country was wiped out by christians because it wasn't trinitarian but, like, like, and, and you're saying well it don't really matter if you no, but I, 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 me i don't i don't understand why you are so easy to just you know you know what no but i think uh, and then you'll move on to my beliefs no, about islam no but i'm the reason why what i'm trying to do is highlight if you're holding me to a certain standard i get standard, what you're doing I because that's why the discussion is about why you left islam i didn't leave islam left christian no, 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 no not that you didn't leave christianity no. but you didn't believe no. in it so i'm saying to you in we live in a rational world where people should be applying the same standards to the way yeah. they analyze things so i'm saying okay if that was your criteria Let's look at what you believe in and see if you uh, hold yourself to that same standard. If you don't, then I find very big inconsistencies in that testimony of where it doesn't make sense because for me, there should be a level of consistency. So that's why I'm trying to make this a two-way conversation. I understand. And I understand. not just me defending I understand. I understand. It's, it's, you're, not on, your you're not on trial, it's not an interview. Yeah. So um, in terms of are you the explain the Trinity? Yeah, so in terms of the Trinity, that's why I ask you, what, did, what don't you understand about the Trinity? Because so I you said to, it doesn't yeah. make sense, for example. Yeah, yeah. I talked so, about God's attributes and right. I was coming down as a so, man. So, 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 so my, 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 if, in terms of, you said, you know, God being co-equal, um, yeah. how long well, has first, this conversation been? We'll wrap up soon. Yeah, uh, firstly, we'll what, what do you believe in the Trinity? Can you explain it to me, your belief of the Trinity? What is it? Yes. All right, we'll finish. finish okay. Um, so my understanding of the, uh, the Trinity is that the Father is... Uh, eternally existent, the Son was eternally begotten, and that the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. And they all act in different ways, they acted in, they act in unison. So the reason why we would say there's one God, because there's one God in essence, but there are three persons. So now people say, well, how does that make sense? Well, that's why I'll ask you about um, where do you get your understanding of what stick on it stick on it <laughs> no but this is why i say where do you get your and that's why i want yeah. to break down the argument yeah. let's uh, let's analyze what our understanding of one is because one can have many meanings and if you say well it's logical what is your logic reason that's why i feel to quantum mechanics quantum physics because there are things i can demonstrate within that that are called counterintuitive but they're not wrong mm. so that's why i'm saying don't be fooled by your faculty, just be like, oh, that makes sense. Does the Holy Spirit have a will? Does the Holy Spirit have a will? Yeah. It does the will of the Father. Yeah. Uh, it, in terms of will, they, they share one will. In terms of so they can't disagree. They don't. They can't disagree, and I'll tell no. you why. Does God know what's right? Yes. So can God go against what's right? No. So if the, if the Holy Spirit is God and Jesus is God and the Father of God. That means they know what is right. Yeah. And the so things that Jesus didn't know, I won't go, I know you already know that what yeah. I'm going to say, but the things yeah. that Jesus didn't know, how do you reconcile that? He was suddenly a man person, like he, he, because he lost his divinity on, on earth? No, because God in terms of was, and the thing is, you know I, this already. To the, I know, I'm yeah, referring yeah. to the fig tree and uh, not knowing the last hour. Yeah, but let's, how do you reconcile it? Oh, I've still got, yeah. yeah. I'm going yeah. very quickly because you know the arguments. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, but that's I what I'm saying. I just want to know how you yeah. reconcile that. Yeah, but this is, that, we're, that's going on off topic because all I'm going, I'm going to summarize it in terms of, we're talking about, I want to just generalize what the Trinity is. 
so and how I came to the conclusion of the Trinity because your main claim was it was illogical and we can another time go yeah. into the specifics. Yeah. So just I'm to confirm, saying, you don't think it's that important for Christians to really know this anyway? No, I'm saying as in do, in terms of doctrine and trying to understand it, it's, it yes. Can we? I'm saying we can we fully know the nature of God? Okay. Or does does God's nature have to conform yeah. to what we believe? Like, would, would Bob the Builder be sitting at home going, yeah, I really agree with Paperboy's Trinity there? Is he going to no, be? but I haven't given would you he? the definition. No, I'm I, don't saying know, I know you haven't, but would he agree with you? Yeah, what, what is my point? What have I said so far? I don't know yet. Well, then how can he agree with I just with want to know if he would disagree, if he would agree with your, if he shares your same belief about what well, you're going to say. Yeah, I don't need to know what you're yeah. going to say to know if yeah, you believe it or not. I, I would say any Christian would listen any to Any Christian will, be, will agree with that. Yeah, okay. so, I just so, want to know. So what is my claim? I'm saying that because you have a God that's one and that's triune, because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's false. Will every Christian agree with that? Agree yes, with that, yeah. exactly. So, and my, my second point was that, and I appeal to things through science to demonstrate that what you think is rational is not necessarily rational by a scientific perspective because there are things that can't be explained scientifically that can be explained, which we accept, but then we want to limit God into what we perceive of God. So if God is one, you're saying, well, how can three persons make sense? That's a triune God. But if God lives outside of mm. our, uh, outside of creation, and God is not like nothing like creation, yeah. because your Quran says Allah is not like any, anything in creation. But in your terms, he is, because Allah is one person, and human beings are one person. We're saying God is one being, but three persons, which is nothing like creation. So then you're rejected saying, well, I don't understand it. But then this is why I said, well, I go back to what the revelation describes. And that's how I understand God. I said that the Bible was not prescriptive, it's descriptive. So then Christians have looked at the descriptive verses and come up with a doctrine. Yeah. For example, and I'll ask this to any Muslim. Is this a hard question for you? I've, I've given you I've given it an, an, well, can an you, answer. Can you so, summarize your? So I said the Father yeah. is eternally existing. Yeah. The Son yeah. is eternally begotten, yeah. and the Holy Spirit is um, through the Father and the and the Son. It's, it's, so that is the Trinity formula. Formula. Then you're going into specific. Well, how did Jesus okay. know about the fig okay. tree? Yeah. And, yeah. and I said. That's the conversation itself, which Fine. maybe for another time. Fine. So I'm saying, in its nutshell, that is what the Christian okay. believes. And they're all co-equal in your eyes. Yes. yes. In terms of and essence, the essence is in one. Terms three of persons, one yes. essence. Yes, because you have you have something what is called the economic trinity, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is where this, the where Jesus, for example, says um, he he he. And they can never disagree. Well, how can they disagree? Yeah, because the, 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 and this is an well, another. Jesus asks this is the another, Father for advice. Well, this is this is a, that, so they clearly but don't necessarily know. But this is another error in the Quran because I ask you, can God? God knows what's right, and you said God will always do what's right. So if we're using a proposition yeah. that Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Father is God, they would all by default, regardless yeah. if you want to call that polytheism or whatever, yeah. they would all by default have to agree what is right. So this is where we talk about the economic yeah. trinity. Well, that's where we got onto they're all knowing how did the other things but I know we don't have to get onto that but that's yeah. why that question came up. Yeah but all I'm that saying make in terms sense. of how, how they, yeah, but that's what I'm saying so I can explain something to you and it will never make sense and that's why I okay. said well in terms of if we appeal to science black holes or lots of different things there are a lot of paradoxes in this universe that we can't explain. So my question is. So parts of be, Islam that we, we are said you may yeah, not know this, but that's right? What I'm saying, that's what I'm saying, and Christians but, will but agree not with me, in our main and, or Bob at home will agree with me, yeah. is that there are lo many paradoxes within this universe that we cannot fully explain. I do not see why God should be fully explainable. What your result would be, retort would be, well, God should be simple to understand. Why, if God is greater than the universe and we do not fully understand the universe, should we be able to simplistically understand the mind of God, the will of God? But even the Bible says, mm. I'm, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. A Muslim would agree with you on that. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying, because we, when we start going into the granular details, well, this and that, we can discuss it. But I'm just saying, in terms of the Trinity as a concept in itself, I don't believe ignorance should be an excuse for incompetence. And that's why I would then appeal to things in science that people aren't aware of. Because are you aware, for example, within the realm of quantum physics, that something more than one can be described as one? No. 
Okay, let me just show you, and I'll wrap up in a second. And this is why it, it's like, for me when I hear that, it, it, it's no different to people who worship the sun because they saw the sun rise and come down. It's like, oh, well, logically, that must be a God because it makes sense to me. But I'm just saying I'm sticking to what the revelation described and then trying to um, make sense of what God is through that. So, for example, you have something called quantum entangle. Quantum yeah, entangle. And it says entangled particles would remain connected even if they were on the opposite side of the universe. And there's also this one where it says this is the most famous of the uh, paradoxes. It involves a pair of particles linked by the strange quantum property of entanglement. Entanglement occurs when two particles are so deeply linked that they share the yeah. same existence. Yeah. Now, this... So what you're saying to me, let's say we're in a conversation, you're trying to get me to accept Christianity. Right. You're just saying, look, Jordan, you may not know about the Christianity, it may not all make sense to you, but yeah. accept it. No, because I've just shown you, for example, yeah. that under quantum physics, and you just read it for yourself, yeah. it says two particles yeah, fine, fine. can share the same existence. Yeah. So I'm saying there's nothing like God, but if you're saying... Most people would not believe that exists. Because if I had two tennis balls and I said to them, can these two things share the same existence? They'll say that's logically impossible. But under quantum physics, they prove that atoms can do that. So what are you basing your understanding upon? You're basing your understanding of what you've observed in the universe. But there are other things that have been observed in the universe which you're not aware of. And that's why I'm relating that to the understanding of God. Because if I'm saying, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit share the same existence. We say the, the same sorry, the, share the same essence. Then and they that don't is share the same attributes, do they? No, but no. that's what I'm saying. The atoms don't share the same uh, attributes either. But they're, say, they're saying so. You would have to refute what the scientists say on the, on the quantum would I? level. Yes, because I'm saying in a similar way, if you apply that logic to, but we're, we're talking about salvation, though. But again, so I'm I'm t talking about reality. So yeah. I'm saying to you, listen to what listen to what you're saying. You're saying I my salvation should be based on something I understand. Is, yeah. is that fair? Yeah. So I'm then something I worship, something right. inside in my afterlife can't no, be so wishy washy exactly. like this. So, so you I'm, can use the atoms as examples, right. but that doesn't, but it doesn't really. But that's what I'm saying. But. Yeah. When I ask you about evidence about Jesus, the original Injil, that's all wishy-washy, but that's fine for you. Really? So I'm, I, because I you, about the Quran. Yeah, but that's so why I'm... that's not wishy-washy. Yeah, but I'm saying... To you, maybe. Yeah, I'm saying wishy-washy means that we cannot establish the truth, that there was an original Injil, that there was an original Torah, that someone else was on the cross, that there was original Christians. I can keep going on. Like, the Quran talks yeah. about Dulkarnain. So do you think we have the original Torah with us today? We have a copy of what was handed down, so we don't have the exact book. But well, you we agree with me then? But that's we have the. Yeah. It's like we don't have the original um, Quran. We don't have the original Quran. That's why, for example, that whole Yasser Kadi. Um, something could be different. No. Okay. What, something completely what, different. What is your understanding of having the original in the Torah? Um, because I'm going to apply that same criteria. So, so no to the verses, Quran. like like no verses added, taken away. Right. Yeah. So if I show you example. from Islamic history that verses have been taken away. Yeah, show me, show me. Okay. Because the reason why what I try to go through I, step by step is because Yeah. I get you, you're trying to you're trying to see the standard, right? Yeah, and I feel like it's very, very inconsistent. Um, Yes, Akadi wasn't even talking about what you're mentioning. Yeah, he was talking about the different dialects of it, right? Yeah, which were all revealed to, to, to Prophet Muhammad. The question was, him. if I give you a black Musa, can you yeah. write down no, what was revealed by yeah. Muhammad? He said no. Yeah. That, that's the question. Yes. So it was even predating that. Yes. Predating that. But we're not talking about verses missing and stuff like that, are we? We're talking yeah, we about the, the obviously I'll, revealed I'll, about the vowels and the different no, dialects no, no. and things that, like that. No, but that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, I'll prove to you. Because people, especially a lot of Muslims, have been fooled into believing into the into straw man arguments. No, no, no. I understand the misunderstanding about preservation of the Quran. And Yasser Qadi's talk kind of mistalked, but he's talking about you know um, kind of each letter and everything being completely 
completely accurate. Because you're talking about versus disappear yeah, and stuff. Do you let me know about that? I, we, I will go away and look at that. Yeah, because, I, I will find it. Because to we, me, because the, one of the big things of my faith yeah. is that the Quran is. is uh, it, what was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is what we have today. Okay. Which, which you don't have, right? You don't have Jesus' exact uh, words or anything. You, you've, we've sort of established it. You've got testimonies and things, which you're okay with. You're okay with. Because that was the method yeah, of yeah, revelation. Yeah. I, that's why yeah, I say yeah, I, yeah. I accept. Well, I'm not. Okay I'm not. With I'm that, not but you're all right with that. Well, okay. So when, let's see. Because within the uh, Umar, the, the original uh, Sahaba, there were disagreements, yeah. and some of the Sahaba had different verses. So, particularly Ibn Masood, and I'm going to try and find you some of the verses. Yeah, that maybe I've give got. me the reference, or yeah, maybe yeah. if you want to talk next time about it, we can. Yeah, um, let me just see if I can. Give me it to take away, and if you want to. Um, I think I do know where you're going to go, but. Okay, so because I've just had to find it very quickly, you yeah, can. Yeah, I'll read it out. You can take a picture. So Ibn uh, Ubay Ibn Kab. Yeah. So in his Quran, it agreed with Ibn Masud in some places, and it disagreed with Zayd. So it says, uh, uh, "Let me just show is you." This is pre Uthman. Yes. Pre Uthman. Yes. So this is written in Islamic okay. sources. Okay. So I can find more if you're here yeah, next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So it says. So for the standard reading, and I'm not going to try and pronounce Arabic. Where's the reverse taken away? So he omitted words. Yeah. Uh, so in some of the, let me find where. There's nothing there that says verse taken away. Okay, let me just hold on. <laughs> I'll find it. Uh, okay, so here is a, this is in Al Qurtabi, yeah. Tafsir of Surah Al Azab. It yeah. says, Aisha narrates Surah Azab contained 200 verses during the lifetime of the Prophet, but when the Quran was collected, we only found the amount that can be found in, present, in the present Quran. So here yeah. is Tafsir Al Qurtabi, one statement yeah. that verses have gone missing. Yeah. Um, and I'll try and find. Wait, 200 verses? Yeah. Not surahs? Uh, Surah contain, so there's one surah containing that. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's reduced. Yeah, okay. So you said nothing has gone yeah, missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you said it was. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I'll find yeah, it a bit in yeah. the Sud one, but it, finding it on the spot isn't easy. All right. And then we can wrap up on that. Look, I appreciate your time and uh, appreciate the fact that you're able to um, dialogue. No, no, no problem. Because that's not easy down here. Oh, actually, and. Uh, Maybe next time we can speak, but yeah. I've just seen some of that reminded yeah. me yeah. Um, in terms of what caused um, Yasser Qadi's crisis in faith when he was um, quite young is because he felt there were human elements added yeah. into the Quran. Yeah. So are you aware of this? Yeah. Right. So that would be additions yeah. that you asked for. So there are additions that, because for example, with the that the Nasekadi speciality isn't even the preservation well, of the Quran. Either so, way, he's not even yeah, a scholar. So I'll validate what I'm about to say. Yeah. So for and example, he, he grew up in a Western so, kind of. He so, studied in Western yeah, but this universities. Is, but here's the problem: um, when you grow up in the Islamic world, yeah. you cannot criticize the Quran. Otherwise, you will face severe consequences. And there was a, a, a scholar, I forgot his name, in Al Azhar University in Egypt. Yeah. Is Nasekadi still alive? No, he's not dead. No, no, okay, no, I know he's not. You I'm, said it. Yeah, so I'm going to say, so he criticised and said there was human additions to the Quran and he got kicked out of his job. He had to actually leave Egypt yeah. for, for quite a long time. I'll find out what his name is. That's why Western scholarship is more critical of the Quran mm. and that's why it's leading and that's why these uh, issues are coming out more in Western scholarship yeah. than in Islamic because you cannot criticise the Quran in that yeah. same method, yeah. method. It was taken so, very seriously. Exactly. So the Quran says, do, do they not ponder upon the Quran? I don't have found in it many uh, errors and contradictions. So in the West, that's what we do, and we find many errors. And you agree that Yasser Qadi's crisis yeah. of faith 
was down to his belief that there were human editions in the Quran. And I really care about your yeah, and in, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You have to yeah. look at the evidence. But I'm saying, for example, and just to close, yeah. you said that um, with the dialects, it was real by the Prophet. And we have someone called Pais Dem Siddhi, for example, who's looked at the dialects within the different Kiraat and said they are regionally inconsistent. So what, what I mean by that, for example, if I had, like in England we say trousers, in yeah. America they say yeah. pants. If I had a book of Harry Potter, I wouldn't expect on page one it to say pants yeah. and on page two it to say trousers. If it's in, if Harry Potter is in the American dialogue it, and Americans don't understand trousers, then every time trousers is used, it would have to use the dialect of pants. Mm -hmm. That would be consistent. That would be what would you agree? That would be a mm -hmm. consistent methodology of okay. having something in that dialect. And what we find is when they the claim of dialects, yeah. we don't find that consistency because it'll be yeah. like this dialect in one sense and another well, dialect. We're talking that we're now talking about words and meanings of words, no, which no, is no. still a very strong. You know, we're still talking about the the, the Quran being preserved in an amazing way, aren't we? Well, we can say it's a. Do you, do you respect the preservation of the Quran? I can respect the preservation, okay. but it's not perfect preserva preservation yeah, okay. as Muslims claim. It's not the letter for letter, dot for dot. Oh, every Quran yeah. exists. I think exactly you, you've spoken to Mamadi Jab on this topic, haven't you? Uh, no, no, that was um, that was Chris, and he was explained. And he said, from what I remember, that your scholars all disagree because no one knows what an Arif is. So he said, according to uh, Tabari. If one half is uh, preserved, then the Quran is preserved. Yeah. But there's so many disagreements in what that actually is. Yeah. Al Sayyuti yeah. quotes all the different opinions, so we can't actually say if it is preserved. And we know, like some of the verses that I gave, and I'll, next time I'll find it for you, yeah. just check out Ibn Masood and within Islamic literature, yeah. we can see some. And of just to be clear, you've got no issue with verses disappearing and stuff. You're testing my standard. Because you, your, your books. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying in the Bible. I'm saying. I'm saying in the Bible. 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 There are. So there, there are. No, there are variants. Yeah. No Christian. No Christian has ever no, no, claimed no, no. the letter for letter, dot yes. for dot, perfect preservation of the Bible. Yeah. That's the only the Muslim claim. And when we investigated that, it was false. So that's why we have different standards. So if you think the Quran has to be perfectly I don't preserved, think that was a Muslim claim. Yes, it was. I can show you. Yes, Kadi used to say that. Mansour used to say that. And I, the only thing is, I have the evidence, but it will take me time to, to bring yeah, it up. Fine. So if we have another conversation, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll come yeah, back. I'll, I'll rewatch this and things that we've yeah. gone over. Yeah. All right. So nice conversation. Appreciate it. Next Appreciate time it. We can go Quick question. Yeah. What's your um, thing on Palestine, Israel? Uh, I think there needs to be a. Com it needs to resolve. There needs to be a resolution because I think I think there is some justification in terms of the so response what? to um, the Hamas attacks. Every country would, but whether it's gone, gone too far, I think there needs to be a better balance in terms of human life because no one wants to see any anybody die. And as a Christian, it's not that, oh, we're in favour of... Well, you're aware that as Christians being yeah, blown exactly. up too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's yeah. not just a case of, well... No, I'm just asking your opinion because I've turned up today and I've seen a lot of support for Israel from Christians. Yeah, I think, that's I think, baffling, baffling no, to me. No, but I so. think Christians... I disagree with your point about, obviously, response because I don't. I think we're talking about... Cool. You're obviously starting it October 7th and anyone, well, that's that's anyone reasonable yeah. now knows it was before that. Well, that's what I'm and saying. And they know the... Obviously, you've got an occupier versus it's, an occupied state. Yeah, so the, 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 the context has to be Yeah, it's, to be very com it's very complicated. I don't think it's complicated. I'll tell you why because it's very simple. This, this is and this is what I will ask, and this is what Christians ask. If you have Israelite, Israel, Jew, Jewish people, Israelis who were there before um, the um, influx of European Jews, right? Yeah. Now the question would be, and I ask this in comparison with black people. There's a lot of black people who are in America, in Brazil, all these countries who are slaves. I say I believe they have a right to return to what their natural home is. So I'm saying if some people might say, well, they're not real Jews, I don't believe that. But I also believe that if 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 uh, these are people, natural they're Jews, they're not the original ones, are they? Well, the Bible what, talks about the Canaanites. No, but that's uh, what I'm being, saying. Being masculine, no, but I'm just saying my, my, yeah. my perspective. So I'm saying in terms of the like 
with black people through slavery, yeah. even though it's generations like comparing after. the Jews to the black people. No, yeah, I'm just saying in terms of I feel a certain level of empathy to say that they, if there are people without a home, because they let's be uh, let's be real about it. If they are descendants, let's just whether people believe it or not, but let's just go with the premise that they are the descendants of the original Jews. If they are the descendants, then there are people without a home that have been yeah. displaced into, into many countries, and they're the only yeah. people on this planet that we can say that don't have a, their yeah. own uh, yeah. st nation. So I feel empathetic. Well, in terms the Kurds of, don't have a home now. Plenty of people don't yeah, have a home. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. That's what I would say. I yeah. would. My opinion would be people should be able to yeah. return. And even now, there are a lot more in America than there are in Israel. Yeah, so they're, they're 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 fine over there. Yeah, but all I'm saying is my belief is that people should be able to return to what is their historical. Home so you give that Aborigines could take back. Australia, the well, Romans could come and take back England. Well, this about, is a, yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm it's saying. A, a, no, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not yeah, disagreeing with yeah. that. I'm, the, the, the problem is, is the how. So I, I don't disagree with the right. I believe everyone yeah. should be, if, yeah. especially if they've been kicked out of their land yeah. historically. The how is where yeah. it come, becomes yeah. a problem, and that's fine. That's, fine, and that's fine, what I'll say. But well, just to clarify, you condemn the idea for what they've done. Condemn the idea. Well, I think when yeah, if they're killing innocent people yeah. like on purpose, and yeah. I condemn any in, any right. injustice. In, right. in just yeah, 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 right. But oh, I also support their right to retaliate. I know you will say it goes back, and that's where I feel it's a long conversation in itself, and that's where it gets muddy water. So I'm just saying, on the very simplest thing. The thing is, that retaliation, you could say the Palestinians were retaliating, couldn't you? So that's it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, no, it's that's not very saying. strong. That's why I said it gets complicated. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. And as it's interesting, isn't it, why people would only give the right to the Israelis as a, as a retaliation, but the Palestinians have to kind of just. No, but that's what my perspective would be. The Palestinians have been there a long time. They do have a right to be yeah. there, and they shouldn't be kicked out of the land either. Mm. There needs to be a way to yeah. what, what people are. And they're not being kicked out. Is the way they? is to reconcile the matter. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in terms of principle, I would say I believe that people should be able to return to their historical home if they've been kicked out. But I don't think anyone should have not have a homeland, and that's why I say even with slaves. I believe if they wanted to return to Africa, they should have a right to. But people can disagree, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. All right, I appreciate nice that. All right, mate. All right, mate. All right. Nice one. Uh, just to conclude, so uh, whoever's thing. Yeah, so we had a conversation and we went through many layers. And what I wanted to highlight was the, in my belief, the inconsistency in the Islamic argument in terms of, in terms of, um, one standard for believing in Christi rejecting Christianity, but if we, if people are consistent I, and I, I apply that same level of understanding or critical thinking to their own beliefs, I believe that they wouldn't believe in the same thing either. Because the danger is, is saying, well, I believe God should be this and following that. When I said to him, for example, okay, let's just say we know who wrote the Quran. If the Quran makes claims and we cannot find those claims to be validated hi historically, for example, can you prove to me Jesus is a Muslim? Well, the Quran says it's true. Why should I believe the statement of that? And I said, as a Stillman point, okay, let's just say we don't know who wrote the Bible, but if the Bible says Jesus was this and we find evidence to support it, why should I then reject what the Bible says when the evidence supports it? just because we don't know who wrote it. I would logically, if we were in a court and a judge asked what happened, the judge has to go by the evidence. So I'm saying, if people are reasonable and consistent, you should look at the evidence and say the one that is more easily verifiable, that is the one that should lead to the truth. Because I've never known a truthful person to make a claim that can't be verified. So in terms of the claims of the Bible and the Quran, show me where the original Injil was, show me who believed in it, Show me where the original Torah was. Show me who believed in it. Show me that Jesus was a Muslim. Show me who wrote about it. Show me the original Christians. Show me where, what they wrote about themselves. But we can't find anything, but I'm supposed to then believe a book because we know who wrote it and it's apparently from God. There's no validation. So I will go to the book. If you claim no one wrote, knows who wrote about it, but as long as we can find records historically that verify it, I'm standing in firmer ground. So that's why in closing people will say if you follow the evidence it will lead you to christianity but many muslims have to distort history and the evidence to conform to their beliefs that's why we can't find who was on the cross who was this alleged person who were the original disciples well the original it's all 
Bill Akaif, the knowledge is with Allah. So on that note, for the audience, I would say, look at it rationally and observe all the claims. And on the final point, he didn't even realize that Ibn Masood had um, verses that were in his Quran that were not in the Ismanic Quran. But why are the, these been this sort of uh, information being hidden from Muslims? Some people know about it, but many don't. He should, he's been a Muslim for a very long time. I know about this, he doesn't. So if you're saying, well, the Bible has missing verses, so does the Quran, because we can look at what was in some of the companions. So if you're being consistent, then you apply the same logic you apply to the Bible to the Quran. And on that note, peace out.